What's going on ladies and gents and welcome back to the briefing room. Now in today's briefing room I want to talk about crosshair placement and situational awareness as a minor if you will. Now crosshair placement in Rainbow Six Siege is pretty much how you're winning gunfights. If your crosshair is in the right spot, you get a headshot. If your crosshair is in the wrong spot, you're probably shooting at their ankles and are going to die. Now crosshair placement can come in various ways. With a gun that has a higher recoil, like Buck's Assault Rifle, you're probably going to want to put your crosshair in a different position. So maybe you can use the recoil to benefit you to, you know, bouncing to the person's head. Or, if you're very keen on your accuracy, your crosshair could always be situated on the person's head, no matter what, essentially saying, I am so confident I will one-tap this person that there is no other option and... You're, he's gonna die. So let's talk about that and then how situational awareness also ties into crosshair placement and why it's important to master both so you can just win in Siege all the time. So the two clips I'm gonna be highlighting today are a clip that I've recorded myself where I get this nice little three shot headshot thing going on chalet where I get a nice double headshot kill on two people on an elevated position and then use my situational awareness to understand where the third person is and I then know what position they are in, which would be crouched, and then I get a nice headshot. And then also Hoyo will be submitting an ace he got as Jaeger, so we get to see where his situational awareness and his crosshair placement helped him get the ace as well. So let's take a look at these clips and see what we did right and what we did wrong. So looking at my clip here, the first thing I should have done is obviously droned up the stairs, but I did have the intel that my teammate died up there, so I knew that there were people holding the area, and from in the beginning of the round, I, would, I did drone out and knew I was on the flank that they were holding in that sector. So I came up from behind, and to keep my crosshair in an elevated spot would be better than just to keep it at normal positioning, because I'm moving up the stairs and trying to keep it at the top of the railings as possible. Even though I wasn't directly looking over to where the opponents were standing, I did have my gun already pointed up and just trying to peer over that, t that second and top part of the railing on the overlook just so I didn't have to run into headshotting them through a bunch of hot mess of metal and weird hit detection. And then because of that, I was already in position. I could just look over and then proceed to shoot one and two person in the face, making it a lot easier for me to get the drop on them even though they did have the height advantage, I was in a spot that I covered most of my angles that I could as a solo player and watch so that I wasn't being shot from a giant open area. Now, I did know that the person did die near bedroom even without a callout, just looking from the uh, skull and crossbone, as you saw, or even relating back to situational awareness there, seeing where those skull and crossbones are and trying to deduct yourself in where, what area your enemy is in and then trying to keep your gun in the right position to take out the foe as I hopefully aimed my best to do there. Now coming up this next part here as I make my way around I signal to Cole who's playing as Jackal to breach open the hatch and try to add pressure to the enemies who are uh, beneath him as I go all the way down to the basement and try to get a flank. Now, as I come around to walk through Wine Cellar, I do see that there is a mirror window in front of me. Now, this mirror window is blocked off by two reinforced walls, which mean they cannot shoot at me unless they break the mirror wall. So, in this event, I knew I was safe-ish. When I say ish, is that I knew that I, if I was seen through that window, I was either being called out or someone was going to move in to take me out. Now, I did have the angle of there's two doors that lead from trophy room one with the closest side to the mirror window and one with the other side closest to the window now my first challenge was that if someone wanted to come get me from the uh, more inner door the one closest to the mirror window they would have to come out further to push me and then have to potentially get inside of a full sprint now if they wanted to push me i would have had the audio cue of them and i could have back off and potentially engage them so my best bet was to hold my ankle and watch for whoever was trying to peek me now i did not use my drone which i did not help myself get rid of that random factor of enemy stance but as Mira was in the crouch position and my crosshair placement was just supposed, well, as I was coming up the stairs anyways, there wasn't too much I could necessarily do. So I kept my crosshairs in the best static position I could. Thus, I aimed right at her face and blew it right off her shoulders. 
successfully killing her and showing that if I, as long as I keep in my position and I figured someone would peek me on one of the key angles that I'd see first. And my situational awareness of knowing the map Chalet pretty well is that that is the first door that would have seen me and that I would have you know, alerted everyone after I killed her. But the main thing is I got rid of an operator. She went down and that's it for her. I used the best I could of my knowledge to take out three opponents and I did three kills more than any of my team did that round whether they droned or not so sometimes although droning is the most important thing not sometimes all the time droning is the most important thing even if you just have some sort of awareness and just general idea of what kind of game sense you're playing in and what the enemy is you can easily overcome a lot of obstacles just by general good crosshair placement and understanding how the map does and does not work so next let's take a look at Holyos cliff so let's look firstly here. As Hoyo rips up the door and goes to spawn peak, he takes the operator's head clean off their shoulders. Nice shot. Now, of course, spawn peeking is commonly frowned upon in the community, but personally, there's actually nothing wrong with spawn peeking. The only thing that's wrong with spawn peeking is when you have advantages that where the person first deploys off the game and they can instantly die before they have any control over their character. That is bullshit. But in an instance where that person had complete control over the operator, it is 100% their fault. They were not ready. They were not ready to engage. You did not have any awareness. You did not look up. Of course, Hoyo's faster. He had more reaction at that point. Even the window that Hoyo got that headshot, he still had to run outside after that two-second margarine, which then he still made the audio of ripping out the door, running, and then also being detected. The person did not do anything to retaliate. So at that point... It's kind of your fault. So let's look at the rest of the clip. Now the second and third kill part of his ace are actually quite simple and quite easy. All he did was happen to notice that either here and or notice the window was being punched out within office. Turned around, the person was the wrong place at the wrong time, they did not hear Hoyo sprinting. He turns around and blows Twitch's face off. Simple as that. Then he comes down the stairs and from him and Valkyrie being the same party, that is Tyler, um, they were communicating and probably Hoyo was given the call out saying, hey, someone is over there. The worst thing you can always do is attack an angle via prone. So much more of your body sticks out around walls and you're just a lot slower. Don't go prone. There's no need to go prone. Go crouched and use a better position or stance in that sort of aspect. And you also open up to a lot more headshots. So Ash, Twitch, you guys died to the own lack of just generally using their audios using their game sense, and Hoyo obviously took advantage of his, and won in those situations. Now, lastly, we have the two final kills coming up here. So Hoyo is circling around the area of action. He goes through, goes around, and starts to receive fire from bedroom. So that, in his mind, is now a mental check that someone is in the washroom and bedroom area. So he can use his audio to hear if any more windows are broken out, and... You know, but his first objective is that he does successfully get out of there, trying to return some sort of fire to scare off the opponent. A little bit of a riskier move. You could have just done that and or ran away. He did risk in dying there more because his health was really low. So now in a lower health state, plus every offense operator has very high damage weapons, Hoyo also did realize that there was action going on around the kitchen barbecue area so he had ripped up the door earlier now him probably using audio and just checking there over because typically people tend not to move into the area when there's a low count of operators for some reason people seem to think the idea that everyone's going to come to them well in the idea that that kind of happened in this situation where hoyo did go to that guy but he popped that at him from a different angle so capital maybe next time you should watch more of your angles hoyo simply scoring the kill over capital mm -hmm. easy peasy Lemon Squeezy. So, next, Hoyo still had that memory of uh, the operator. I believe it was Sledge in there, but I think it was an LE5 they are shooting at him. I can't remember. Um, but he did have that memory that someone was still in that area, and that person was probably not going to push out of them doing it to be the last person alive. So, Hoyo taking his time, crouching, using his audio, putting his crosshair, hopefully will be the most optimal positions, aims around, waits for his opponent, uses his audio, and then completes the final kill of the ace. 
So I hope you guys did learn from today's video. I hope you guys understand why situational awareness and crosshair placement is extremely important. And I hope you learned from the other enemies that moving into the objective is very important instead of sitting outside and waiting for the enemy to come to you because you will and can get flanked. So if you guys do want to submit your own clips to the briefing room, use this email listed here. Uh, once again, I'll only be taking 720p, hopefully 60 FPS. That would be a nice addition if you guys could. If not, that'd be cool. I know that the Xbox game DVR, you can't export clips once you process them to Xbox Live and then take them off your Windows 10 Xbox app application in the Microsoft Store or Windows Store, I think it's called now. Or if you guys have a recorder uh, like an Elgato or any other capture card, you can do that as well. So I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys' clips and submissions so we can do some more briefing episodes. Let me know in the comment section below if you want any other topics covered. And hopefully these videos are very educational and do help you guys. So without further ado, on the day's roast, thank you guys once again. And I'll see you, Sexy Beast, next episode. Peace.